Hello and welcome friends in this particular presentation. In this module, we will be discussing about the various applications of theodolite in land surveying. Briefly, we will discuss about the extension of the survey lines, establishing the line beyond obstruction, lining in, balancing in, running a random line, as well location of the intersections. As such, as you go through these content, you will be able to use the theodolite for various surveying applications such as extension of survey line, lining in, balancing in, running a random line, as well as location of intersections of survey lines. When we make use of level compass, because of the limited capabilities of such equipment, we won't be able to collect the requisite data. Even if the stations are established quite a far with respect to the instrument station, or if they are placed above the line of sight or below the above the horizontal plane, plane in elevated manner or in say depressed manner we won't be able to collect the data as such. Under such circumstances, theodolite would be a preferred option of surveyor to collect the horizontal, vertical angles, bearings, that too more accurately. Usually, theodolite is mainly used for measurement of the horizontal angles, vertical angles, to locate the points on a line, to prolong various survey lines, to carry out leveling operations, to carry out trigonometrical leveling, to line out the structures, to set the various gradients, to measure the various gradients, as well as even the ranging operations related with the curves. Though, just for sake of understanding the list of applications is given here, the surveying operation attracts lot many operations which can be facilitated by making use of versatile equipment like theodolite. Let's try to understand the First application. Say we wish to place a certain station at some specific level. Say, for example, we wish to place lintel level with respect to plinth level, or we wish to set the ceiling level with respect to plinth level. So under such applications, let's have the equipment set at certain station A, carry out the temporary adjustments and raise the telescope through the requisite theta so that the line of sight passes through station P. So as we measure this particular theta with respect to horizontal plane, the vertical ordinate V can be determined as V tan theta. Hence, the area of station B can be determined as HI plus V. As you know, the height of instrument can be determined with reference to the station on which the equipment is set or by taking the backside on a point of known elevation. So here the way we discussed about the determination of RL of B, 
The way I was trying to discuss initially if this particular station V is to be set with some definite RL. Now the corresponding theta needs to be worked out. Telescope will be raised through that particular theta the way we discussed about the setting the vertical angle. And as the equipment is turned in the requisite direction with that calculated computed theta will be able to set that particular station at requisite order. Typical application is extending a survey line beyond the station. Say for example, there could be extension of road pipeline, building lines, etc. So in order to extend this particular line, such as line AB towards C, D, say Z, we can make use of foresight method or we can make use of backside method. Say, if we wish to adopt this particular foresight method, set the equipment at station A, carry out the temporary adjustments, then bisect the station B, clamp the equipment so that there won't be any rotation in its horizontal plane by making use of upper clamp, lower clamp. Then as we look through this particular station P and as we continue the line of sight towards C, D according to way they are placed in, we will be able to measure the distance with respect to station A up to C and their position can be marked. Similar operation can be done for D etc. till we reach our last station. Say if we wish to adopt backside method, now set the station at B, carry out the temporary adjustments, plan the equipment, have a back set on station A and now transit the telescope towards C. With respect to B, we can measure the distance and station C can be marked in continuation with this AB. Same process is to be observed in order to mark station D till say the last station Z. Sometimes the line of sight could be erroneous and it may not be perpendicular to Kronian axis. Hence, as we follow this particular back sight method, the way we wish to have B, C, D, Z in line with AB, they won't be in line with AB, but it would be making some inclination and instead of location C, D will be getting the location C dash, D dash, which won't be in line with this particular AB. So under such circumstances, we can go for method like double sighting. So when the line is to prolong with high precision or when the equipment is not in adjustment, this double sighting method can be adopted. The method is also known as double reversing. Say, as depicted in the sketch, this line AB is to be prolonged same point beyond point T. So set up the equipment at station P, level it accurately with a first left condition, have a back set on station A, clamp both upper as well as the lower motion, then transit the telescope and set the point say as C1. Now loosen the lower clamp, rehaul the telescope in the horizontal plane and have back sight on station A. Again bisect A exactly by using the lower clamp and its tangent screw. 
So the instrument will be having its phase right condition. Transit the telescope and establish point C2. As we wish to have the exact location C, for that C1, C2 needs to be connected and exactly bisected. Here, what we get is nothing but station C, which would be lying in the line of AB. Now, here we can have the equipment set at station C and the way we followed the process in order to mark station C1, C2 after setting the equipment at station B, similar process can be followed at station C and further be continued till the last point is established. Sometimes it is quite probable that the end stations A and D are not intelligible, but they can be seen from some intermediate station C. Hence, in order to mark the intermediate stations, the operation known as balancing in or wiggling in can be followed. Here, we have to judge the position C dash as nearer as possible to line AD. So, here we'll be setting the equipment at C dash, then take the back sight on A and transit the telescope to mark D dash the way we did in our earlier operations by making use of lower clamp, upper clamp and their respective tangential screws. So, here we have to measure the distance d d dash in order to know with what extent this particular equipment is shifted towards line AD, we can have our first trial determined as C dash C is equal to AC by AD into D dash D. Obviously, here this line won't be perpendicular, hence we won't be getting the similar triangles, but we'll be getting some amount through which the equipment needs to be shifted towards this C. So the way we get this particular C dash C, we'll go for our next trial and as such, we'll mark the point C double dash and again, after having the path side on station A, we can mark the station D double dash. Here, again this CC dash can be computed approximately as AC by AD into D double dash D. So, such trials are to be had till we get the exact location of station C so that after occupying the position C, when we transit the telescope, it should intersect location D. While working on site, sometimes there would be some obstacles beyond which we need to prolong the line. Say for example, now here we wish to have this CD extended in line of AB. However, because of obstruction like building, pond, marshy land or any such obstruction, it is not possible to have this particular CD marked occupying station A or station B. So under such circumstances, we can make use of various methods like equilateral triangle method, deflection angle method, offset method, one random line method or double random line method. The surveyor can use his earlier knowledge and one can devise any other method than the listed here. So for example, 
we will go for this particular equilateral triangle method. So with the theodolite at P, we'll have the site towards A, we'll turn the telescope through 120 degrees and we'll mark the station C conveniently. Now, as we occupy this particular station C, again we can have the backside on station B, then we can have angle 60 degrees set so that station D will be fixed. Here, distance BC should be equal to distance CD. So, as we occupy this particular station D, again after having the backside at station C, we can turn the telescope through 120 degrees and we can sight in the direction to mark the station E at requisite distance. So, by making use of this particular equilateral triangle, B can be set in line with AB by making use of such procedure. Similarly, here one can make use of this particular deflection angle. So, with a theodolite at station P, let's have alpha laid off and mark the station in this particular direction at suitable distance BC. Occupy station C, lay off a deflection angle now of twice of alpha and mark station T such that BC is equal to CD. Here now again we can set the equipment at station D. We can lay out the deflection angle equal to alpha degrees and we can mark station E in the line of AB. This is a very simple method which is offset method. Let's have the station set at B. We'll have the angle 90 degrees set with respect to AB. Mark station C conveniently. With respect to C again, after having the site at station P, we can turn the telescope through 90 degrees in order to mark station D. Occupy station D. Have the site at station C. Have the telescope turn through 90 degrees. Mark the station E such that again BC is equal to DE. As we occupy station E, we can turn the telescope through 90 degrees in order to get the direction EF which would be in line with AB. One more method is random line method. So here with the theodolite at A, turn the telescope through certain suitable angle theta and have this particular station C, D, E marked on line AB and measure the respective distances. Let's have this equipment set at station E and define the offset B through 90 degrees such that the line will be passing through this particular station B. Let's measure distance B. Now set the equipment at station D, turn through 90 degrees from A, mark the station G dash such that D D dash is equal to B by A into A. Similarly, here we can have this particular C dash marked as such. Here this line A C dash D dash B can be defined. Please excuse this particular line. Line EF is collinear with AB. In the similar manner, we can follow this particular double random line method also. So, with the theodolite light at station A, turn the telescope suitably through theta degrees, mark the station C and D on first random line AD. With the same setup at A, turn the telescope through 
theta degrees and mark the station E as well as F on this second random line AF such that AC is equal to AE and AD is equal to AF. So here we can bisect CE and DF in order to get the location C dash and D dash which will be collinear with AB. In lining out operations especially there could be requirement of intersection of two building lines, two survey lines which would be keeping some kind of alignment. So here we can keep the equipment at station C, carry out all the temporary adjustments, have station D sighted, clamp the equipment, then let's have station P and Q defined by using steel or timber pegs which are capable to receive nailing as well as strange joining station P and Q. So here this PQ stretch should be chosen in such a manner that you expect the intersection R which is to be marked for the intersection of line CD and EF. Now occupy station E, site the station F or set the equipment at station F and site the station E. So as you do so and as you carry out the temporary adjustment and as you clamp the equipment, now you can have the line of sight passing over the strange marking the stretch PQ. As such, rider can be plussed at point R. In turn, this R can be transferred on the ground by making use of plumb bomb in order to get the intersection of line CD and EF marked on the ground. So I hope the applications that we try to discuss are clear to you. I thank you for your attention. As we move ahead, we'll be discussing one of the important applications of theodolite, which is nothing but theodolite traversing. So, by till then, I wish you very happy learning. Thank you.